Hey everyone and welcome to what is going to be the last non-gameplay video of our build up to the uh, Let's Play Nobunaga's Ambition um, again LP. It's not no it's Nobunaga's Ambition um, Rise to Power. I God, I don't even remember which one this is called. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. Um, but I'll be able to, uh, I'll figure it out in time for the actual video title. So you should just check the title of the video you're watching and it should tell you the name of this game. Anyway, um, as, uh, this is the last video that will have no gameplay. Uh, and the way that if I get these videos processed, uploaded to YouTube as I intend to, it should be, uh, public on the same day as the next video, which will be the first one with gameplay. So if you do not have a character you've created for this series and are not really interested in watching me go through the created characters, you should be good to go. If you literally saw this video pop up and had been refreshing your YouTube, uh, and like the minute this became public, you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, you've got to wait about 30 minutes before gameplay. For 99.999% of you, the first video with gameplay, which is the next video in the uh, playlist, is already up, so so you can go check it out. It may, in fact, be the first video I do once I make the playlist. I might, I might just start with the next one. But anyway, this video, I'm going to go through all the created characters. It is going to give, uh, because of the nature of how I'm doing the LP, we're going to do a couple of quests in one scenario. And then we are gonna, we're going to cut it off, and we're going to start a new scenario. Um... So in a sense, we're actually going to lose, uh, we're going to have some weird stuff where we do some stuff and then we lose whatever detailed progress we made because we're starting a new scenario that has different events. And um, I'm not going to explain that in detail right now because I'll have to explain that in the next video. Uh, and I figure there will be people who watch this video for the character stuff who don't watch that one. What I'm getting at for you guys is don't freak out if there's anything wrong with your characters. If you intended to have a character and you did donate and I somehow missed you, I, I tried, I put some real effort into making sure I got everybody. But if I somehow missed your character, um, at this point I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a play session and record some Nobunaga's Ambition this weekend. So you will be late to the party if I somehow missed you. But I believe I got everybody. But if I didn't and don't freak out, the vast majority of this Let's Play is going gonna, is gonna to be the second of two scenarios we're going to play. We're going to play one scenario to get some quest stuff done. And then most of the actual gameplay will be in a second scenario. So by the time you've seen this video and responded to it in the comments, I'll have an opportunity to fix anything that's wrong. Same goes for characters who have been submitted. If you're like, oh no, JG made me female daimyo and I wanted to be tragic heroine, I can fix that. Uh, but it won't be fixed immediately. You'll have a couple of videos where it's wrong. Uh, also, anybody who is in the LP and didn't mean to be, um, that's a possibility. It's a it's a weird one. Er Earl King is the one I'm thinking of specifically because he submitted a character in my previous LP, and he donated enough in this one to, to get the reward, and he never came back and said he wanted to be in the LP. So I was kind of like, man, what the hell? I'll just it's it's a created character. I already made the character. I'll go ahead and use it to give me one more good officer in my force. But like if Earl King pops up in the comments, it's like, no, I don't want to be in this LP. I'll I'll respect that, but I won't be able to remove Earl King's character until we get to the next round. So anyway, that's it. We're in our starting city of the first scenario we're gonna play. Where right now, um, the way I've structured this out. Uh, Teramune Date, the father of Masamune, is still the clan leader. And his son Masamune Date, who is nowhere near as annoying a boss as uh, his caterpillar friend, but is still kind of an annoying boss in Neo, he will be, for the vast, 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 I'd say probably over 90, um, probably over 95% of the LP, uh, unless things go really poorly and I can't take over Japan before he dies, he should be our daimyo. Uh, so now we're going to go and we're going to skip down to the created characters. And I'm going to show them in detail in this video. I'm not going to try to belabor it a ton. But I'm not going to really force myself to rush either. Because I've given fair warning to the people who aren't... You know, who don't have created characters and aren't interested in this video. Have fair warning that they can skip to the next video for the LP proper. Anyway, easiest way to do this is just to look for where the bios stop. And that's right there. So as you can see... We really, um, like if this was uh, 
Romance of the Three Kingdoms, where your officers cost gold every turn in, stip in like constant stipends, we would potentially have overwhelmed, like overdone it here. Too many high-end officers on one force is like a gold drain, and we might not be able to support them. But as you can see here in this game, well, you can't really see that here based on me flipping. Oh, never mind. I kind of figured all of the created officers would be together at the bottom, but there's some guys down here who. But I would, argue, I would say, hold on, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 twenty,
and some people already would have two traits and pick two traits they didn't otherwise have and some people pick two traits and one of them was a trait that they start with based on their growth type and it's not that big of a deal guys but yeah i gave myself earthwork expert just because that makes road building easier and road building is a huge thing for me in this game really costs a lot of money but it really helps your uh cities out in the long term um so that's JG Mystery. Uh, we've got then uh, Earl King, who, like I said, never actually reached back and said he wanted to be in or not be in. So I'm just throwing him in. I'm like, what the hell? But uh, if he doesn't want to be in, he can jump in and say that he doesn't want to be in. He's a progressive. You know what? I really should look at it um, real quick because, like I said, I'm not rushing through this video. I figured the people who are here are interested in this. Um... Samurai cat's faces. I don't even know what Saihai no Yozuke is. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, so you can edit people. I don't really want to do that, but I do want to see what uh, Masamune Date's uh, actual stuff is. I'm sure he's progressive, and I think his dream... I think... His dream is most likely... Oh, you know what? I don't think M is... I think M is in the first half of this list of names, and just because they're Japanese names, there's a lot of Ys. There are letters that in English names wouldn't really be a common letter for a first name to start with that could be quite common in Japanese, especially because the family names are coming uh, second, I believe. Yeah, I think here they're arranged first name, then second name. Oh, am I wrong about that? Oh, boy, I'm wasting a lot of time here. Uh, no, I'm right, So, because the Mori is the family name there. Otherwise, I should have just like looked, for, sort of gone to D for Date, but I was pretty sure that's not how it was working. We'll look at Masamune real quick, just because it'll give you some idea of whether or not you're likely to get bonuses for um, loyalty bonuses associated with having the same worldview as Masamune and actually being, you know, well oriented towards supporting Masamune as a ruler. You don't really need to worry about Masamune's dad, because Masamune's dad is not going to be around for much of the story. This, this, I, I structured this to kind of, you know, show the rise of Masamune. Who's irritating as he is in uh, Neo, and often in Samurai Warriors and Warriors Orochi games and stuff. It's actually a pretty cool historical figure. Uh this might have been something to do before switching um, into this and away from the um, might, have, might have done this while we were still in game here we go Masamune Date um, so personality is progressive and his ideal is spirit interesting Oh, he's got Dandy Assault. That is, that is Mysterious JG's technique. I did not realize that. I did not set out for that. But um, he's a patient youth. But he is his ideal is pro progressive. Sorry, his tenant is progressive. His ideal is spirit. And I kind of wish I could get some of that back. Some of that time we just spent. Anyway, all right. Now, if we were to go back to the created officers should be arranged so that the active ones are all at the bottom. They're not. We saw JG Mystery. We will now go through Earl King. He's progressive and his ideal is clan, so his tenant will be the same as Masamune's, but nothing else. Um, he's a middle-aged planner. <laughs> Cunning fox. And as you can see, he's pretty all-around kind of officer um, which in this game tends to mean you're not popping up doing that much to tell you the truth because um, I'll have enough really solid combat officers 
uh, a good all-arounder may not make it into combat as the leader of a unit, and you may not be the first one selected for domestic tasks either. So he's got well above average stats, but might not be might not be doing that much. So we have uh, Zerfall, who's progressive, but he's all about the fame. And um, his tactic is ghost coins, which I have no idea what that does. Um, let's find out. I'm curious. Ghost coins lowers defense but greatly raises attacks. Of course it does. What else would ghost coins do? Um, he's slightly... I think he's... Is he slightly older than everyone else? No, I'm crazy. 1580 is the start year for everybody. And... Um, He's a diplomatic monk. And he barely showed up on my last Nobunaga's Ambition LP, so I'm glad he'll get a chance to do something here. Although, he is more of a um, domestic officer, so we'll be seeing some of him, but not necessarily doing exciting battle stuff. Uh, we have Lethal Feline's character. Lethal and Grimoth, both through the magic of Discord, uh, gave me their blessing to use their old characters they submitted years ago when they watched my channel. Um, or at least this, um, these super long LPs of this type. Um, and, uh, this is Lethal's, uh, he's, he's a freaking monster. He's, he was kicking a lot of ass in battle, fighting for the Hojo last time. So I'm kind of looking forward to having him working for me this time. He's, uh, he'll actually get along really well with Masamune. His required loyalty of 10 is, is not the lowest, but it's not the highest. But once Masamune takes over... There will be some bonuses there because he's got an extremely similar personality to Masamune in this game. And uh, he's got the tiger hunting tactic. And he's an eccentric with fortitude. He's a tiger. He, he's a, if you want to put a tiger in your tank, you go with uh, Toriyama Rosaru. Then we have Grimoth. Same deal as before. Um, well, Lethal... Uh, yeah, these guys both these guys met thresholds to get into the LP. They just didn't submit new characters. Um, so uh, Grimoth is progressive, but has the mastery ideal. So some bonuses, but not as many bonuses with uh, Masamune. Required loyalty of 15 is means he's going to be difficult to keep happy. He's going to be a squeaky wheel. But um, oh, I remember. Why did I do this? I gave him all sorts of traits last time. He had like a specific thing he asked for all these traits and I remember giving them yeah he definitely has a different kind of character from most because I think for whatever reason I I let him bend the rules slightly in his character creation but that was years ago now and he's not watching so part of me wants to go take those back but whatever um he, he you know I, I asked him if I could use his character in the LP and he said yeah so why would I go back and dick around with it now but yeah definitely he ended up with more traits than most of us but these are basically anyone else has the ability over the long term to get all of their traits they just have to grow into them grimace is going to start with almost all of them he is yet however to become hawkeye <laughs> and he's actually more of a uh, domestic officer in this one so he'll be a city building fiend then we have vulture bobo uh he's warrior's warrior He's got actually fairly similar stats to uh, Lethal, but he's middle-aged stern. Arr, he's got the Bond Breaker tactic, which is causes enemies in front to attack each other. Interesting. And um, he's he's uh, not difficult to keep happy. Just you know, make sure he's got some something with which to trim his beard. He's good to go. And he's married, to, or his relative is Vulture Bean, as opposed to uh, Mysterious JG, because I can only select one. Um, I guess that's strange how that happened. Um, yeah, there's your Vulture Bobo. He's progressive too. Everyone's been progressive so far. Uh, Bean is a progressive fan of justice, and uh, she's mostly a political type of officer. Uh, she doesn't have Earthworks Expert. Hopefully she'll get that. That'll make her really useful for building roads. She's slightly harder to keep happy than Bobo, but not too bad. We have Hamuko Arisato. Domo Arigato Hamuko Arisato. She has required loyalty of two, so she's really easy to actually keep happy. Uh, she'll be a very loyal officer for the entire game. In a weird way, that... You know, it means I probably won't be showering her with gifts or titles because she's not going to require them to do her best. Um, 
and she is uh, a, another one of these like good overall officers, but probably not going to see a lot of combat because of her low leadership score. Her growth type is woman. <laughs> she's the first one so far who hasn't been progressive either. She's neutral, so she's not out there. Um, she's not necessarily uh, going to boycott Hobby Lobby, but she's not going to go out of her way to, to support Hobby Lobby either. She's neutral. She'll go to Hobby Lobby if she needs something that they sell. She's not gonna she's not gonna go out of her way to support Hobby Lobby one way or another. She's politically neutral. Then we have Shaman Yamazaki cosplaying here as Shingen Takada. He is progressive with the mastery ideal. And uh, he is gonna be a combat badass. He will be a combat monster. And he's got the one eyed dragon trait, so he's looking to win Masamune's approval there for sure. Now we have Kalan Owari Sanada who is... Oh, I didn't check the loyalty on this guy. That's pretty pretty middle of the road. He's got a required loyalty of one, which means he'll be somebody who's like sticks with us without needing a whole lot of extra rewards. He's going to come out here and do his job. And uh, he's got a really high pull. Uh, he had an interesting distribution of points. Low Valor means he's not the... And by low, I mean like 50 is actually middle but with these creative characters who were given a lot of points to play with it's like it's like getting a 7.5 rating on your game at IGN that actually means it's pretty mediocre um or 75 out of 100 or however they do it so his 50 uh is like a real average but it you know with everyone else having like 75 as an average but he's lucky and he's got Nobunaga's ambition so that's a thing by the way, if you're if you want to take the time to pause and look at your stats and make sure they're right, you can. If if uh, you're a, somebody who created a character for this, I'm not going to go. Th I'm obviously not going through every single thing. So now we have Akari Ando, a brave female and a cunning fox. She's foxy. Uh, I'm sorry. She's also neutral and not progressive. So we've got a couple of neutrals in here and uh, required loyalty of 15. And I do think, I, I can't remember the username of the person who created this character, but I do know that they are doing a little bit of role-playing as somebody who's who's talented, but is difficult time connecting with people and with a force, and has had a hard time finding a force where she feels that she belongs, and that's why the required loyalty is 15. So she will probably get um, treasures and possibly titles dumped on her, her and Grimeth. Uh, in particular I'm thinking of because she doesn't have any of the same tenets or ideals as Masamune I need to find some way to keep her happy until she's been here with the force long enough to get the longevity bonuses to loyalty or just station her in cities that are not close to forces that she can defect to that would be a shame though because she's a good officer with uh, very good leadership with good leadership really good leadership and just excellent valor and she's got growth type KG so eventually she would just be a really good combat officer I don't think there's... Yeah, it's just the detailed version of the same. Then we have uh, Ald's character. I'll have to avoid saying creepy things about how this character is attractive because at the end of the day, this is Ald's character. Uh, Elmendreta the Avatar. I don't think Ald has weird um, identity issues where he thinks he is his in-game character, particularly when they're female, but still. I have I have had the fun experience of watching Ald play Final Fantasy Tactics, where, and I don't approve of this one. Although I don't suppose my approval is required. He changes he changed the main character's name in that one to Ald. I always will use some kind of name for a character if they make you choose one, and otherwise I use the default name because I just think that's who that is. And Ramza in particular is a character that. I remember from, you know, playing games in earlier... Yeah, but the point of the story is he changed Ramza's name to Ald. So there will be points during the all where it's like, Damn it, Ald! Or Ald, you suck! Because his in-game character did a particularly poor RNG attack or, you know, got knocked off of a cliff or something stupid. And it'll be, Damn it, Ald! Anyway. Uh, Elmendreta the Avatar is a progressive, but she's her ideal is justice. So she'll have some connectivity with... Masamune. Required loyalty is 7. That's pretty middle of the road. That's pretty normal. That's like not really standing out as like as like super dedicated without 
needing to be compensated, but also not standing out. It's like somebody's a pain in the butt. And um, kind of an interesting split here with the very high intelligence. Um, she would definitely, she might not be the leader of any particular unit because she'd be competing with people who have leader scores in like the 90s. But she'd be an excellent support officer in any any unit because having an officer with 100 intelligence is going to make it very difficult for enemy units to use tactics. Uh, and there'll be a handful. Most of the things, like, she may end up just constantly at the Imperial Court, actually, because the higher your intelligence score, the better you do with that. Like, if she were to get the diplomat or emissary traits along the way, uh, she's somebody who could potentially be spending a lot of time earning uh, credit with the Imperial Court or um, building up credit with forces that I want to make long-term alliances with. We have Lady Tollpanzer. I can't remember the name of the user who came up with Lady Tollpanzer, but there she is. I'm kidding, of course. Uh, this is Tollpanzer's character. Uh, progressive, as most of the characters are, with mastery as an ideal. Required loyalty is 5, which is about as low as you can go without it really standing out as unusually low. And... Um, as we go, make sure that your home, your starting base says Yonzawa, because if it does, that means I was actually paying attention and set you up to appear in the right city as a retainer and not as something else, like a, a Ronin. So she's, um, despite the armor, uh, she's actually mostly a political officer with some good leadership too. So she's one of those all-arounders. With Earthwork Experts and Master Fortifier, I don't, I don't know how much fortification comes into it in the game, but because um, I don't always remember exactly what all these things do. Occasionally, labor needed for infrastructure tasks is slightly decreased. That's a good one. Fortify and roadwork posts and roads were improved by two stages. Yeah, I will be getting a lot of use out of this. Out of her. Lady Tollpanzer will be spending a lot of time making roads, at least early. Because that's the uh, Earthworks experts really handy. Then we have Bloody Handed. Patient man. He's neutral. Which is about which is basically to say arch conservative by the Date clan standards that we're forming here. There are individual historical officers in the Date who would not be considered progressive, but um most of our creative characters and Masamune himself are progressive. Um, he's mostly a war character. Um, and Fierce Gunner, Marksman, I will be attempting, uh, because it's in character for the Date, to be using muskets a lot. Then we have Eventide Fate. She is a cheerful person who is progressive, but believes that part of becoming more modern is becoming more capitalist. She wants monies. And uh, she's an elite ninja. A hot, sexy ninja who likes making money. Then we have Monkey Merc. May, the character, the YouTuber is named the, Mer the Mercenary Monkey. So it may be that this is meant to be Red Merc Monkey. It probably is, but it came out Monkey Merc. Much as I've had characters who are called JG Mystery and also Mysterious JG. Um, he's neutral, and but believes in the fan he's the clan he's got the phantom foe tactic which i believe screws up the screws up the ai's target and lowers their defense and he's primarily a war officer then we have booker Ryubos. Ryubos? we have booker war garble and uh, he's also progressive but into the money so he too like Eventide Fate, it's a sexy ninja who wants to make lots of cash. Um, his tactic is cheer. This is Dante Country. You beware. And um, he's going to be mostly a. Well, he's kind of got all around her stats, but with high intelligence and leadership, he'll be a good secondary officer in a combat unit, but with 85 pull, he may or may not end up doing a lot of uh, political stuff. We have Okami Hato who is a tender female. She's progressive. She likes snipe hunting. And um, 
she's gonna be a badass war character, which is always it's always fun to have a female character who's like a badass in combat. And that's it. I think I got everybody. There's no names jumping out. I'm scrolling through them now. It's people that I was pretty sure were part of this. I know there's people like Mr. Shelton who wanted to be and, and weren't able to, to do it this time and, and we're you know, awaiting future opportunities to have have all these folks um except for all Alton get lost. But everybody else who has a character here, love to see them come come around again sometime. But uh for this time, I believe that's it. I don't think I've messed anything up. I think everybody who's in the LP is in the LP. So in our next video we are actually going to start gameplay. It'll be the opening point for people I don't know why I'd be talking to them now because they shouldn't be watching. Anybody who didn't need to watch this video, go ahead and join us for the next video when we I will try to make it brief my explanation of why we're doing two different campaign scenarios. Um, and then we'll jump right into the first and much shorter of the two scenarios that we're doing. See you then.